follower and you are watching Fountain TV. And today is another segment of GNS of the tutorial and the, um, the course title is GNS one to one philosophy philosophy of science. And we're going to talk about we're going to do the first episode now. And philosophy of science, you will have been wondering what do you need it for? But well, it's just like evaluating the scope of science generally. And on that philosophy of science, we're going to talk about the biology aspect, the physics, chemistry, mathematics, every other, anything relating to science. And today we're going to talk about the geography aspect of it. The geography aspect, which is going to be the episode one. Under the geography aspect, we have um, some topics to talk about. The first one is the atmospheric layer. The second one, the planet. The third one, rocks. And let's start, atmospheric layers. Atmospheric layers, they are they are put into segments based on their what on their temperatures. Once you should understand that, that they are they are based on what on their temperatures. First one, and we have. A, I hope I'm communicating. Now the first one, troposphere. The second one, stratosphere, which is the second layer. The third one, mesosphere. Um, the fourth one, ionosphere or thermosphere. And there's a particular layer which is about 50 km above the earth. It is named the, what? The exosphere. Now we are going to take this one after the other and we are going to explain. Now the troposphere. The troposphere consists of 75% of the air and um, the, the water body on the, in the in the in the head surface and the atmospheric surface consists of about 75 percent of the hair of it and first thing one thing you should note that, that what the troposphere is what is the first atmospheric layer is the first atmospheric layer and it consists of about 75 percent of the hair and gases that is what that is in the atmosphere and it is what the lowest layer you find it down the lowest layer now the second one is stratosphere the stratosphere it is the second layer it is the second layer it can only be found above the what the troposphere it can only be found above the troposphere and under this troposphere the 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 boundary layer the the, the let me say the, the 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 upper part of the troposphere is called the tropopause so after the tropopause we are, we are going to find what the, the stratosphere which is the second layer and so on like that and the third layer, which is what the mesosphere, it is that it's also called the middle layer of the atmosphere. It's also called the middle layer of the atmosphere. And the third layer. And one thing you should note that the, the difference between all these things is what is their temperature difference. In the troposphere, the temperature is what is that more higher than what the, the stratosphere. And the stratosphere temperature too is what is higher than what than the mesosphere. And two also, mesosphere is what the temperature is what is more higher than what than the thermosphere. And the reason why the thermosphere is also called the ionosphere is that what the the eclipse. Let me say the, it it tries to what to shed off some kind of electron from what from the air uh, from the atmospheric surface from the atmospheric boundaries. And all these electrons that have been shed off, they are what they are positively charged, and that is why it is called what the ionosphere or the thermosphere. I hope I'm communicating. And now the, this last one, the fifth one, there are some other all, all other layers, but they are not highly recognized. But this last one, the exosphere, it is it is 50 km above the head, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the atmosphere. It is 50 meter, 50 km above. It is 50 km above. And, and uh, I hope we can get something like that. And under the the exosphere also, it's mainly con contained of what oxygen and hydrogen atom the exosphere consists of, cons, consists of what oxygen and hydrogen and hydrogen atoms consists of oxygen and hydrogen atoms and so that's that about that there are some other layers there are some other layers like the there's one magnetosphere 
and so on like that there are some layers like that but they are not highly recognized but one thing you know that what the first layer is what is the troposphere the second layer is what is this is the stratosphere the third layer is the mesosphere the fourth layer is the ionosphere or thermosphere and the fifth layer is what is the exosphere and some other layers are down like that and now we are done with atmospheric layer now we want to go to the second one the planet i know we are all familiar with the name planet planet but what is a planet? What is a planet? A planet is a celestial body that orbits around the sun or the moon. One thing you should know that what planet is not a moon. The planet is not a moon. It is just a form of body that orbits around what? Around the sun. It orbits around the sun. And we all know that we, that's, that's why on Earth here we have what? The day and night. And now, there are some times, let's say this is a planet. Let's say this is the sun, I mean. There are some planets like this. They orbit around the sun, around the sun like this. It is a celestial body that orbits around the sun. Now, this is the Earth. There are some times, the sun is set like this. The sun is set, and there are some times, there are some sometimes that what the earth will be what will be will be backing what the sun, and that is when we have what our night. So what I'm just trying to say is what planet is not a moon, but it's just a kind of celestial body that orbits around the sun. And one thing is that it it is it has what a fixed hydrostatic equilibrium. It is actually fixed. It is actually fixed. And we know there are some types. There are there are a lot of planets that we know right from the Mercury. Let me list them out. The Mercury, the Venus, and our planet Earth. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. The biggest one, the Jupiter. Followed by the Uranus and Neptune. I know you will be saying Pluto, but Pluto is a dwarf planet. Out of the characteristics of planet that we know, Based on scientific research, the Pluto has fallen short of those characteristics, so it cannot be what it cannot be included into into the planet again. There are a lot of pl um, plan um, dwarf planets that we know, but one thing you should know that the biggest out of this planet is what is what is the, is the what the Jupiter. The biggest is the Jupiter. The one that supports life mostly is what is the Earth. This one supports life. There are some other ones that still support life, but not as what well as the earth does. Now, you know, I drew I drew something for you the other time where I, where I drew I made an illustration of what of the sun and some planet evolving around it. Now there are some distance of this thing to the sun. The the one for head, the distance of, of it um, of it to the sun is what is 149.6 million kilometers. That is the distance of the Earth to the Sun. The distance of the Earth to the Sun is what is 149.6 million kilometers. Please note this, note it very well. The distance of the Earth to the Sun is what 149.6 million kilometers. And so also all of that, all these things what they have their own um, distance too. They have the, their own distance too. Let me try and write them out. The Mercury is what is 57.91 kilometer. 91 million kilometer, sorry. And the Venus is 108.2 million kilometers. The mass, uh, that is 227.9 million kilometer. And the Jupiter, which is the biggest planet, is 778.5 million kilometer. All these things are extremely far from the sun. The Uranus is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter. I'm sorry, we made a mistake here. The Saturn should be here. The Saturn is what 1.434. This one is billion, billion kilometer. And the Uranus is 2.87. 
billion kilometer and the Neptune is 4 which is the last one the 4.495 billion kilometer so these are the distance of all these things to the to the sun the mercury is 57.91 million kilometer the venus is what 1.108.2 million kilometer that is the distance between the planet venus to the world to the sun and the earth which support life and that is where we are living it is 149.6 million kilometer the mass is 227.9 million kilometer the jupiter which is the biggest is 778.5 million kilometer and the saturn is 1.434 billion kilometer and the uranus is 2.87 billion kilometer the neptune is which is the last one it is 4.495 billion kilometer and now let me quickly add this they can ask you the giant planet out of this thing is what i told you before the biggest it's also called what the giant planet giant planet that is what the jupiter and the dwarf planet that we know is what is pluto dwarf planet that is what pluto there are a lot of lot of uh, dwarf planets that would uh, that, that has been found right from maybe around 2003 2004 but the one that is most recognized is the pluto and now we are done with planet and let's talk about the last one for this episode, which is what? The rock. Now, we all know what rock is. What is a rock? A rock is a naturally occurring solid. A natural occurring solid that can actually exist on its own. It can, it can exist. It is natural. A rock is always natural. And an example of a rock, we have the Oluma rock, the Zuma rock. And we, we know of rocks here about. Even our stone that we see here about is what they are rocks also. They are rocks also. So we have rocks in our environment. And I want to dive into some, some types of rock now. Now we have three major types of rock. We have three types of rock that we know. The first one is the igneous. The second one, the metamorphic. Metamorphic and the third one is the sedimentary rock. Now let's take this one after the other. Now the igneous rock. The igneous rock is always shining, and the igneous, the igneous rock is formed due to the cooling down of the molten magma under the earth beneath. Under the earth, when we talk about the soil. There is a particular layer, there is a particular horizon of the soil, which is called the bedrock. Now, that is where the igneous rock is formed, due to the act of what, of the cooling of what, of the molten magma. And one thing you understand about igneous rock is what, any rock that you see about you that is actually shining, it is what, it is called the what, the igneous rock. It is formed by what, by the solidification or the cooling of the molten magma. An example of igneous rock, we have the diorite. We also have the basalt. Two. That is that about about igneous rock. Now let's talk about metamorphic rock. Metamorphic. Metamorphic rock. Now metamorphic rock are, are, are formed due to. When, they are, when, when some kind of rocks, like maybe the igneous rock, they are subjected to higher pressure and temperature. When they are subjected to higher temperature and, 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 and pressure, then we, are, we, are, we have what we call what the metamorphic rock. That is an example of, it's just like, let me say, the metamorphosis of, of igneous rock will form what will give rise to, what, to the meta, to metamorphic rock. The metamorphosis of what of sedimentary rock will give rise to what to what to, what, to metamorphic rocks. An example of metamorphic rock we have we have what the slate, we have the quartzite, 
and so on. So metamorphic growth is formed by what by the metamorphosis or let me say the changing of what of igneous rock or sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock. I hope you are clear with that. Now let's talk about the sedimentary rock. Let's talk about the sedimentary rock. Now the sedimentary rock are formed. They are formed due to what the litification or let me say the solidification of sediment. Of sediment. Now, have you seen a, a, a particular instance whereby, whereby the, um, a sand is being packed in a place, and before you know it, before you know it, know it, all these sands are what they come together and they are what they become hard. Now that kind of rock is what is called what the sedimentary rock. That is when 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 different sediments come together and they what they solidify themselves together. That is what the sedimentary rock. I will quickly give you what some examples of sedimentary rock. And the first one that we have got is the limestone. I know we have we've heard of limestone before. We have got the gymson and we have got the, the mudstone too. We have the mudstone. And that is that about sedimentary rock. It is formed by what by the solidification of, of sediment or the lithification of sediment. I hope you are clear. So we are we've come to the end of today's episode. On GNS one to one, and I hope you what you like and you subscribe this video. Thank you very much.